We welcome our second place finisher, Jimmy Johnson, driver of the number 48 Lowe's Chevrolet. <coughs> Jimmy is currently our points leader by eight points over Dale Jr. Jimmy, talk a little bit about your run out there today and those last few laps specifically. Yeah, definitely a, a good performance. Um, you know, first pit stop, we went with four and nobody else did and we lost a lot of track position and realized then that, in, you know, the game here, um, it was going to be a little bit different than what we'd expect. And that was our last four tire stop that we made. And that was really key to keep track position. Um, I think we made the car better as the day went on. And I know that we made it a lot better from yesterday's practice to today. So uh, we, we are still learning this Gen 6 car and made some good improvements to it. But at the end, um, it just got you know a little crazy, especially the last lap. Uh, Danny got a huge run, uh, cut the corner down there, and cleared us both. But I felt like I, I still had a chance if I just hung on on the outside around the uh, turns three and four, and I was able to do that and just kind of beat him back to the finish. Okay, we'll take questions for Jimmy. Raise your hand. We'll get a mic to you. We'll start up front with Lee and Reed. Right behind you, Lee. Did you expect the Fords to gang up on you there at the end? I didn't even notice the make situation at all, no. Um, I feel like Carl uh, didn't follow the restart protocol and was slower than the pace car on his last two restarts. And uh, you know, it gives the leader a huge advantage when that happens. And you're supposed to wait till you get between the two lines and take off. And this was all going on before it. So uh, outside of that, um, you know, we, uh, that was the only, the only issue that I saw. Okay, we'll take our next question from Reed, then go up front to Mike. <coughs> Reed Spencer with NASCAR Wire Service. How close were you on fuel at the end? And uh, and for the last part of that green flag run before the caution, where you you and Carl looked like you were running all out, but I couldn't tell. Yeah, I started, uh, you know, at the beginning, Carl got a comfortable lead, and I knew how hard it was to pass the leader. So I, I just went into uh, fuel save mode then, and it felt like it did a good job early. I'm not sure the 99 did because they were pretty concerned, at least over the radio, on what, what was being relayed to me. So uh, at the end, I'd say with about 40 to go, maybe just inside 40 to go, uh, I really uh, started trying hard again and, and brought the pace up and using more fuel and all that kind of stuff. And I got within the three car lengths, but that's as close as I could really get to them. Okay, we'll take our next question from Mike. Mike Embry, speed.com. Jimmy, were you sh kind of shocked to see Denny suddenly start appear there beside you, or were you kind of keeping up with what he was trying to do, dropping low? My spotter was all over it. Um, I didn't expect Denny to get uh, up in front of us like he did. I thought we were going to enter three wide, and I was going to be in the worst spot. You know, the, the lane, the clean line turns away from me, so I was looking out my window, and I could see a lot of the 11. I thought, well, I'm not sure really what's going to happen here. I'm sure not going to let off. And the two gave him some room, and we all rolled in there without wrecking. But uh, when I first heard we were three wide, I was pretty concerned that I wasn't going to have a clean lane to race in. <laughs> Okay, we'll take our question in the back. It's going, Jimmy. Uh, Ryan O'Hara, SpeedwayMedia.com. Congrats on this, or congratulations on the second place finish. My question for you is: In 2006, after winning the Daytona 500, you came. Well, it was Auto Club back then. You got a second, then followed the next week with a win. Started off first and second this year, and with four wins at Las Vegas, you have to consider yourself a favorite. I didn't know that stat, um, but I certainly hope that's. I'd love to see that trend continue, and then you know the five straight championships after that would be nice. But uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll just take it one week at a time. That's a cool stat, and I, I want to keep it alive. Keep it going. Okay, what's we'll our next question? To right here, Becca Gladden with Motorsport Illustrated News. Yesterday in uh, nationwide qualifying, I heard Brad Keselowski say on the radio that he would like to beat you to everything, including the race to the bathroom. And uh, seeing how you guys raced out there today in the closing laps, coming off of the championship battle last year, do you think that this is going to be an ongoing rivalry between you and Brad for the 2013 season? Without a doubt. And it's not uh, just Brad related. I'm sure Brad has a few others on his radar and whoever's ahead of him on the track or in the points. But I'm well aware that with the success that I've had over the last, you know, eight or ten years, that uh, there's a lot of bullseyes on me, I'm, you know. Kind of, kind of afraid to sleep at night sometimes, but um, I, I know those guys are all gunning for me, and that, that's a huge honor. It, it really is to <clears throat> to have <clears throat> the garage and then the the reigning champion, uh, you know, thinking that way about me. Okay, we'll take Terry, Stan, and then Bob. Terry Blaney, ESPN.com. Jimmy, it looked really hard to pass the leader out there today. Um, is that more a factor of this track still being relatively new pavement, or is there still some kinks to work out on the new car, or a little of both? Um, I, 
it didn't seem a lot different than other races here to me since the reconfiguration. So I don't, I don't think the Gen 6 car has, uh, has anything to do with it at this point. I think next week at Vegas we have a track that has multiple lanes and we'll see some great side-by-side -side racing. You know, and you know, the garage area and the teams and owners and the competition side of NASCAR have worked so hard to make these cars equal. And we keep changing and jumping through hoops and new chassis, new bodies, new this, new that. You know, the cars are equal. When they're equal, you're going to have a situation like this. Um, what we need now is the racetracks to consider the asphalt they're putting down and even reconfigure the lanes so that we have somewhere to race. Okay, we'll take the final two questions for Jimmy and then get started with Denny. So we'll go Stan and then Bob. Hi, Stan Creekmore with RPM tonight. Down on the bottom, Jimmy. Hey, hey. Uh, I'm also supposed to tell you hi from your aunt Clarice. Yes, she's here. Yes, she is. <laughs> she, she, she was. Awesome. Told me some stories about you. Oh, God. Okay. How do you know um, his aunt? Pardon me? <laughs> How do you know his aunt? She introduced herself, and she has a oh. picture of him when he was much younger. Oh, man. Okay. Why did they get her Question, Stan. Yes, exactly. I'm sorry. My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> the final restart. It looked like you had a little bit of problem on the final re restart. Did you, or, or did it just seem to appear that way? <laughs> no, you're supposed to maintain the, the speed of the pace car. So I'm maintaining the speed of the pace car and the 99's dropping back. And at some point, you can't see the guy to know when he's going to accelerate. And that's the goal of the leader. If he can get you looking and get out of your sight and punch it, you never have a chance to recover. And that's why the rule states you're supposed to maintain pace car speed. And you have the double red and the single red to work whatever you want to inside of there and to go when you want to still give the advantage to the leader of the race. So this was all happening before that. And that's, uh, you know, that's why I mentioned you didn't follow the protocol. All right, we'll take our final question for Jimmy, Bob in the back. Uh, Bob Packer, Sporting News. This kind of relates to one of the other questions, but in general, what do you think of the Gen 6 car racing today, and um, do you have any ideas of how it could be improved? I think we have a, a, a great product. Um, it's going to continue to get better. Uh, and one of the, the things that we've all recognized over the years is the faster we go, the narrower track gets, the harder it is to pass. Um, speeds will be up, especially when we get to the mile and a half. So with all that being said, I, I think we've, I think we need to leave the cars alone for a good 10, 20 years. <laughs> let, let, the, let the teams be. There's right here on this blacktop. There's a lot of work that can be done to help uh, create better racing and uh, keep the fans, you know, the grandstands.